Good day, everyone. I am Jeremiah Salvador Tuliao from the College of Education in Philippine College of Science and Technology. And right now, right here, I'm going to present to you the concepts of cell theory. But first things first, let just hear the rap song of cell theory. Do you want to hear the rap song of cell theory? Come on, let's sing and dance with me. Yeah. This time, do you want to know more about the cell theory? Okay, so I'm just asking for your full attention. This lesson, is that okay with you? Okay, so let's just start the lesson. Concepts of cell theory. First, I just want you to ask, have you ever experienced or have you ever seen in your whole life a smallest particle or like a cell is it hard yes why because we are limited as human we are limited in our vision to see things that are smallest right okay so first let us topic our, our topic for today let us define what is cell all living creatures and bodily tissues are made up of cells, which are the smallest part or smallest units that can exist on their own. Always remember that can exist on their own. The three major components of a cell are cell membrane, nucleus, and cytoplasm. Those three are major importance when we are talking about cells. Second, I have a trivia for you. Did you know that 50 to 70 billions of cells each day, each day, okay? Approximately, these many cells die in the human body as part of a normal process that serves a healthy and protective role. Those that die in the largest numbers are skin cells blood cells and some cells that line structures and like organs and glands okay sana po ay may natutunan po kayo doon so let us go to the history of cell theory 
first person that we will tackle today is Anton Van Leeuwenhoek. Did you know that Anton Van Leeuwenhoek is a Dutchman, Dutch tradesman, learned to grind lenses like this? and assembled them into simple microscopes. Leeuwenhoek contributed to cell theory, unicellular bacteria in 1674. 1674. His contribution to cell theory was the word cell itself, and his discovery of cells in a piece of court identified the advances that enabled Leeuwenhoek to view the first living cells. And also, he is the first person to do so and his findings were useful 150 years later. Is it amazing, right? When a unified understanding of cells were created, he articulated the pattern component of the theory that all organisms are made up of cells, all right? His research, research, Researches on lower animals refuted the doctrine of spontaneous generation, and his observation helped lay the foundations for the sciences of bacteriology. He, he has also a uh, helped, or he, oh, he has also a contribution when we are talking about the, the science of bacteriology and protozoology. As a fabric merchant by trade, his first experience with microscopy was examining threads and cloth under a magnifying glass. Wow, right? Anton van Leeuwenhoek, he contributed to cell theory, his observations, observations of bacteria, protozoa, and amoeba. Alright? That is Anton van Leeuwenhoek. The second person that we will tackle today, I know that some of us know him before and because he is a popular scientist. Who is Robert Hooke? He's an English scientist who published Micrographia in 1665. In it, sa kalo kaloob kul Sa, na, sa nakapaloob doon sa macrographia, he illustrated the smallest complete parts of an organism, which he called cells. Diba? Andun palagi yung cell, okay? Why? Because they are scientists and they are part of cell theory. That is Robert Hooke. And the next one, the third person and the fourth person that we will tackle today about the cell theory, the history of cell th or the formulation of cell theory rather. In 1838, Theodor Chuan and Matthias Schleiden were enjoying after dinner coffee and talking about their studies on cells. Wow! Sana po makapagkape din kaming tatlo, di ba? <laughs> Para po makapag-share po sila ng knowledge sa akin. But, we are favored. Why? Uh, in the formulation of cell theory, in this part, did you know that it has been suggested that when Shu Wan heard Schleiden described plant cells with nuclei, he was struck by the similarity of these plant cells to cells he had observed animal tissues. Ang, ang ginagawa ni Shuan ay about the animal tissues at ito naman si Theodore Shuan ay ito naman si Matthias Schleiden he is observing, observing plant cells, right? At ito po ay nagkaroon ng nagkaroon po ng isang spark one at a time nung sila po ay nagkausap at, at sabi po dito the two scientists went immediately to the Shuan's to Shuan's lab or laboratory to look at his slides okay, doon po sa kanilang 
uh, next experiment. Chuan published his book on animal and plant cells on 1839. The next year, at three size devoid of acknowledgement of anyone else's contribution, including that of Schleiden, on 1838, he summarized his observation into three con conclusions about cells. And those are, all organisms are made up of one or more cells. Sabi pa dito, pangalawa, all, cell, all cells come from pre-existing cells. And number three, the cells is the basic unit of structure and organization that performs life functions. Okay po, yan po ang formulation of cell theory. Kung saan po, ang ganda po ng ambag o laki po ng ambag ng dalawang taong iyan. The next person that we will tackle is Rudolf Virchow. Virchow's theory stated that just as animals are unable to arise without previously existing animals, cells are unable to arise without previously existing cells also, or what we called omnicellula e cellula. Again, omnicellula e cellula. The idea that new cells arose from pre existing cells in both deceased and healthy tissues was not original. Okay, po? That, that is Rudolf Virchow. And the next person that we will talk to today is the very important person also. Robert Brown. Robert Brown is a Scottish bot botanist best known for his descriptions of cell nuclei and of the continuous motion of minute particles in solution, which came to be called Brownian motion. Dun po siya kilala. Around 1833, Robert Brown reported, did you know that Robert Brown reported the discovery of the nucleus? Okay. Brown, Brown was a naturalist who visited the colonies of Australia from 1801 through 1805 where he catalog, cataloged that described over 1,700 new species of plants. Wow! Amazing! Brown was an accomplished technician and an extraordinarily gifted observer of microscopic phenomena. Wow, He's, he was successful, okay? That is Robert Brown. He also found the nuclei, cell nuclei. And more of about cells, did you know that we have a modern interpretation of cells, about cells? First, all known living things are made up of cells. Second, the cell is structural and functional unit of all living things. And third, all cells come from pre-existing cells by divisions. Spontaneous generation does not occur. Number four, cells continuous hereditary, hereditary information which is passed from cell to cell during cell division. And number five, all cells are basically the same in chemical composition. Lastly, all energy flow, metabolism, and biochemistry of life occurs within cells. That is the modern interpretation about cells. And let us go also about the modern version of, of the cell. In, this includes the idea that energy flows occurs within cells. And number two, heredity information or DNA is passed or from, on from cell to cell. And number three, all cells have the same basic chemical composition. We all know that cell cells are the basic unit of life. And they these are the continuous progress or continuous process of knowing about cells. Many scientists uh, 
many scientists before and now are always are still searching about the cell theory it is a continuous process okay and let a selfie sabi po niya dito do you think you know me kilala mo ba ako sabi niya doon challenge your knowledge of cellular cellular organ organelles this time i just want you to challenge because i i know that my report is limited also because of the time and the broadness or the idea that i have searched i know that uh kulang pa po and i just want you to challenge na i-broad nyo pa po or just do research about cells or multicellular cells and unicellular cells there are many things to do like uh, hindi po natin natakal dito about uh, the components the functions uh, different functions of part parts of cells di ba po ayan po so i just want you to challenge and take uh, take it as a challenge na gawin po natin ito and meron po akong ginawang quote dito the cost of nutrition or meron po akong kinaping quote rather the cost of nutrition and growth resides not in the organism as a whole but in the separate elementary parts sabi niya dito the cost of nutrition and growth resides not in the organism as a whole but in the separate separate element, elementary parts the cells which is the basic unit of life and once again thank you for listening i am jeremiah salvador tuliao and i am happy to serve